So Donald Trump won the Iowa caucus, and I don't think any of us are really shocked. We all expected him to win bigly, but MAGA Republicans are celebrating, man. This is as big to them as when Grant took Gettysburg, which actually they would have preferred that one go the other way, and they wouldn't have been celebrating that back then. But you know what I mean. They're acting like this is the biggest win in history, and of course it's the greatest system in the world and the greatest country because Iowa voters voted for Donald Trump. Now, had it went the other way, we would be hearing every conspiracy theory under the sun this morning as to why it didn't go his way. That's just how he works. But let's take a look at his win for a minute because while everybody's pumping their fists and celebrating and thinking they have this gotcha moment, it's really not the gotcha moment that they think it is. Because in Iowa, there are 752,000 registered Republicans. Only 110,000 registered Republicans showed up to vote. Now, a lot of people would blame that on the weather conditions, but if you look at it from 2016, there was 187,000 registered Republicans showed up to vote, and in 2024, 110 showed up to vote. Now, Donald Trump won by 51%, and everybody's like, whoa, he dwarfed Haley and DeSantis. True, but DeSantis got 21%, Haley got 19%. But that's half the Republican Party that showed up of the 110, half voted for Trump and half voted for someone else. So half of less than 15% of the Republican voters voted for Donald Trump. I really don't see how that's the big win that everyone thinks it is. And another thing I don't understand is why that we go to Iowa and we make that the starting point. That's the place we start and we let that set the pace and we let that set the tone for how people look at an election. Oh, Trump wins Iowa. Wow, let's all look at that and celebrate. But think about this for a minute. Iowa, according to the Census Bureau, is 87% white, 3.7% black, and 2.4% Asian. So we go to one of the whitest states in the country that has, what, six electoral votes at the end of the day? I'm not sure about that. I think it's six electoral votes. They're not a swing state. They're not a state that's going to determine the results of the election, yet we go to one of the whitest states in the country and we let them set the tone for the entire election. And now everyone thinks, oh, we got to get behind Trump because Iowa did it. Iowa is 87% white and less than 15% of registered Republican voters showed up to vote for Donald Trump. So I really don't think that it's the win that he thinks it is or that his supporters thinks that it is. I don't think it's really going to... I mean, it may set the tone going forward for a lot of people, but in the grand scheme of things, when he loses in November, this is why they're going to be so shocked and stunned. Well, wait a minute. He won bigly in Iowa. Well, that's how he won bigly in Iowa. If you want to call that bigly, that's how he did it. And then he comes out and he has the audacity to stand there and congratulate Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley after everything he said about them, after dragging them through the mud, he congratulated them on a good contest and then called for unity. Yeah, he wants us to come together with him. He said it's time for Democrats and Republicans to put their differences aside. Now is a time that liberals and everybody progressives, we all just get behind him because he won bigly in this overly populated white state. Well, we're not going to be gaslit. And he said, he said, he said, my message going forward is I want us to unite. Well, we're going to hold you accountable for your message in the past. And we're going to hold you accountable for what you said leading up to this moment. We're not going to let this go. Let's remind them every day that they have lost every election since 2016. Republicans have lost in every election since 2016. This great big red wave they keep telling us about, it still hasn't got here. And we're not going to forget the fact that Donald Trump said that he would like to terminate the Constitution and he would like to be dictator on day one. He said that he would like to execute generals and political opponents. He said he wanted the economy to crash. He tried to overturn an election that he knew he lost. He incited a riot on our nation's capital. He has dragged us through the mud, calling us everything, calling us the enemy of the state, threatening to deport people who disagree with him, shut down news outlets that disagreed with him. Anybody that reported anything bad with him, he's, he's been found guilty of sexual abuse, guilty or found uh, liable of sexual abuse and guilty of fraud. He has four indictments and 91 charges. We're not going to forget all of those things magically because he had a big win in Iowa. We're not going to give him a pass for all those things he said just because less than 15% of Republicans showed up to vote for him in Iowa. 
we have to hold this man accountable because if we don't, and if he's allowed to just walk right back through the door, what does it say to every person that takes the oath going forward? It says to them that it means nothing. It says to them that the, that the oath they take is meaningless. They can raise their right hand, swear all day long, ain't going to matter. They know when they walk through the door, he got away with all these things, and we can too, and it's only going to get worse. So no, I, I, I will go on record and say I have no desire to unite with Donald Trump whatsoever. And I don't think anyone should entertain the idea. And if you really believe that what he's saying is true and that he's ready to unite now and his followers are ready to unite, just say one word against him and come back and tell me how that works out for you.